Oh, so, I have. Yeah. Epton. We're good. Uh, it's recording right now. So today we have Glenn here talking about his artworks that are selling at the Draw Dot Online store. So for a lot of people, if you want to understand like the meanings behind those artworks, this is the time for you to look at this video. So Glenn, tell us about yourself. Who you Hi. are? Hi. Well, I am a surreal fashion illustrator based in Los Angeles. I, I have an atypical background. I come from biochemistry and linguistics. I actually wanted to become a neurosurgeon, but somehow along the way, I fell into art and I started to take several fashion illustration courses, several fa uh, fashion history courses, and I just liked it. And then I studied fine art and then I just continued on with, you know, just illustration in general. And I am heavily inspired by surrealism, which for some reason comes easy for me. Uh, I, I love artists such as Dali. He was, he's like my, my first love, you could, you could okay. say. And then it was Magritte, and then it was uh, Miro. Uh, a lot of the Spanish surrealism, European surrealism, I enjoy. Uh, Remedio Varos, um, you know, and also some Mexican artists, such as uh, Frida Kahlo, which is my family is from Mexico. So I'm also inspired by a lot of the culture there. Uh, I draw inspiration also from my environment, from my day-to-day -day life. Mm -hmm. And the way that I work with art is I try to uh, have a somewhat of a collaboration between me and whatever garment that I am doing. So it's like I'm bringing them into my world. I'm being respectful of their work and I'm just doing it a around. Just giving it a little bit of a twist, a fun That's twist. Pretty cool. So yes, I guess. Um, what's your favorite brands? Like maybe you can tell us a little bit about your fashion, like Oh my gosh. Yes. So I, I, when I came to the fashion scene, I'm very new to this world, essentially. Um, but I admired vintage, and now we can say vintage, McQueen. I could, Alexander McQueen, he pushed through so many barriers and was not afraid to romanticize the darkness that sometimes exists in all of us. And I thought it was, it was so beautiful, the, the way that he presented this. He was heavily involved with history. Uh, Schiaparelli, uh, I just, of course, it's, it's surrealism and art. So of course, Schiaparelli. Um, who else? Gareth Pugh, when he was still doing, you know, doing his work, I still love him. Rick Owens, I like, I, I like the, the punk edge mm -hmm. of it. Um, I do like Valentino, I, some collections, um, but there are certain designers that I admire, but I have difficulty illustrating. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't see eye to eye with the, the way that they present themselves, but somehow I always find an, a way to integrate my work into theirs. Or with you theirs. always challenge yourself from what I know when I look at yeah. your work. So. <laughs> Yeah, I always try to uh, challenge myself. I'm sorry if there's background noise. I'm sitting in a parking lot. <laughs> That's all right. So right now, I think we are just going to get into your illustration. So let me just share the screen. So this is one of the RPGs you're selling at the online store. So yeah. tell us about the story behind this piece. How did you come up with this concept? So this was uh, my entry for an open call that we had with inspiration with a Schiaparelli. Uh, and I decided to pay homage to an illustration or a painting that Magritte did. So you could see that this is a, a figure or what assumes to be a figure, but I only utilized the different elements that Schiaparelli gave. Uh, so the glasses are actually real glasses that uh, Daniel Rosebery uh, used in the collection. Mm -hmm. uh, the nose was a little bit of a detail in, I believe it was the bag, the handbag, 
uh, also with the mouth. Uh, the ears are earrings. So I rearranged them all to create this figure. The hat is obviously a hat. Um, the lock is a detail from a jacket. And obviously the boots are boots. But I rearranged them to create uh, a collar and a shoulder piece. So it and, uh, look like a surreal art piece. It's like a surreal fashion figure. Yes, yes, exactly. And I, I, I forget the piece that I uh, based this image off of, which was Magritte. Um, it, but it's, it's very beautiful. I enjoyed it. It, it has a lot of detail in gold and lots of sparkle. It does have an unsettling um, way that it looks back at you because there's no there, there's no um, life behind those eyes. It's just staring at you. It's just yeah. an object. Yeah. But yeah, so it's implied that it's a face based off of the way that the eye wanders. And I wanted to uh, also pay homage to Magritte because he also uh, used to paint a lot of clouds in the sky. So this is my way, inspired by two great artists. And Amazing. yeah. Yeah. This is really, really cool. Um, so if you want this piece, and get it. <laughs> because we yeah. only have 25 copies for this uh, for yeah. this print. It was, it, uh, a lot of people liked it. Um, it was also featured on uh, Schiaparelli for, so it, it did get a lot of recognition. I am very proud of it. Um, Obviously, when you stare at something for so long, you kind of go mad. So I'm okay with it. It's fun. It's a fun piece. So, mm -hmm. yep, we are going to go to the next piece. So what about this one? Like, oh, what's the story? Uh, so the story behind this, <laughs> uh, I had, I've gone through several uh, different art eras or uh, styles. And this is at the very beginning of this new style where I was exploring the moon. Now this is heavily inspired by Salvador Dali, mm -hmm. uh, the way that you see the crutches. And here I started to introduce something that has become synonymous with my work, which is the string or the ribbon and how the ribbon kind of takes form, takes life in itself. And uh, the crutches are there to help, it, you know, to obviously help but the weird thing is that they're stuck in the ground so she can't move i mean it's helping her stand up straight but it's she can't move and it's implied that it's a she because of the dress of course now you can say it could be anybody yeah. i mean they're gender to this uh but yeah there the moon is ahead and so on and so forth but i uh, i forget the dress that this was inspired by and it was featured in uh, the Grazia magazine. Oh, okay, so that's cool. Yes, yeah, so this was in a Grazia magazine and uh, I, I wanted to share it with everybody. Now you could own this piece yourself. So uh, okay, 25 pieces, so. 25 pieces. And once they're gone, they're gone because that's it. Yep, and then you're not gonna reprint it. <laughs> so, but but I want to know why do you choose a dark background? Is it because she's uh, so, yeah? So this is a weird concept that I was also exploring. Uh, so I I started to evolve my style, and um, when I started to incorporate painting like this new gestural, because this, these are all digital paintings. Mm -hmm. They're not. They're they're not. Uh, traditional paintings they're all traditional uh digital paintings and but i wanted to mimic that and um i incorporated this new style um and i wanted to do the moon well the moon doesn't exist in the daytime or yes it does but it's hard to see yes. so i just to give it more of a dreamscape mm -hmm. and dream we usually dream at nighttime and i mean obviously also during the daytime but normally at nighttime so i this is when i started to put my figures in a dream and it, it feels empty kind of like kind of like stranger things the upside down yes is, yes got it like yeah. it's like a dreamy world and then a lot of things can happen magical mm -hmm. things can happen 
Yes, exactly. So I, I think it's romantic. It's a little unsettling. But I, I think that this was the start of a, a new surrealism that I was about to embark. Again, it's super surreal. And I think people will probably want to put it in in the bathroom, maybe. <laughs> oh my, in the bathroom? You should put it in your, in, in your bedroom. The study room. Yeah, in your study room. It does have a bit of calmness and peace, yes. I think, because it feels very quiet. There's not a lot of noise, yes. not a lot of action. It's just the figure, and that's it. That makes perfect sense. All mm-hmm. right, we are going to go to the third piece. Now this one. <laughs> this reminds me of American Horror Story, the first season. Uh, American Horror Story, was it... Uh, what was the first season called? The I, how, house. I don't. I, don't re- I think it's the house or something. It's basically the. I, me- I remember in the promo, there's a latex man. Murder, murder house. Murder house. I think it's called murder house. Let me take a look at it while you explain your concept <laughs> because I think it's different. <laughs> I think it's called murder house. I I don't know why that rings a bell, but. This uh, this piece is far older than the other piece, the previous piece. And this piece is inspired not by American Horror Story, but by the I was watching the Oscars. Uh, it was a Sunday, I remember. And I just I was in an art block, art funk, art block. I didn't know what to draw. And you know, when you are in those types of situations, you you just start doodling yep. and doodling. Yep. And so I started to um, also uh, get inspiration by Miss Fame. Miss mm-hmm. Fame at Miss Fame is a famous a drag uh, star. I yep. believe she does is does a lot of collaborations with Victor and Rolf yep. with the uh, what is the flower bomb? I think flower for bomb, the freight. Yeah. And uh, and so I was inspired by makeup. Mm-hmm. Um, and at the time, I looked also at makeup through the eras, and uh, especially eye makeup, eyeliner. And this mm-hmm. is more in the 60s, where it's bold and big. Mm-hmm. So this essentially an homage to uh, the Oscars in the 60s. Now, I gave it a twist because there are colors that make it unsettling. The red is unsettling. The eye color is unsettling. There's no mouth. There's no eyebrows. You don't know yeah. what is on. So, it, and then the gloves with the fingernails also draws inspiration to maybe like uh, Schiaparelli and the collection that they had with the gloves. Yeah. So, uh, this is an homage to the Oscars, a red carpet, uh, a gypsy, if you will, you know, maybe like the gypsy vibes, witchy vibes. So there's a lot of, of that in there, but I, I love it because um, it's very simple. There, it's just a pair of eyes, a pair of gloves, and two little orbs. I don't know if you could call them like light, you could call them moons, but that's it. That's all it is. And it has such a huge impact, apparently. You know, yeah. uh, if you stare at it for so long, I think you should go mad, or maybe it'll tell your fortune or something. <laughs> <laughs> but where is the Oscar statue since that you were inspired That's by what, the Oscar? I, I wanted to. Maybe you could say that the gold is like an homage to the, mm-hmm. the Oscars or maybe the gold in her eyes. I don't know. But I think it was more an homage to uh, big fashion when we, you know, women used to wear the opera yes. gloves. Yes. So in the end, this is like the red carpet your red carpet <laughs> illustration. And yeah. I just did the research. Yes, it is American yeah. Horror Story Murder House. So yeah. that's how I look at it. The weird thing is you could also find <laughs> other interpretations. Some people may find interpretations in Paris, you know, yeah. like Moulin Rouge, uh, yeah. anything that is forbidden because you could only see the eyes. Oh, yeah. So there's a lot of meanings. Take your pick. I, I think that's wonderful. I think it's cool because when it comes to surreal art, you can actually have different interpretations. It's really subjective. So you were telling me this is Oscar. I'm telling myself this is American Horror Story. Someone will tell me that this is something completely different or I know. It be like a makeup. <laughs> it's a I know. 
Yeah. It's so. very, very surreal. There's a lot of influence to Dali. There's yep. a lot of influence to Magritte, where they only added the eyes yep. um, or the no. So, yeah, it's a great homage to some of the great works of art of the yep. yesteryear. Cool. All right. Now let's go to the next piece. This one. <laughs> Tell me if this is based on Alice in Wonderland. This is an homage to Patou, which is, uh, I believe, their French house. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. And I did this after watching their collection. Now, they were not inspired by Alice in Wonderland. In fact, I believe they were inspired by Eastern European fashion. But I wanted to take that away and bring it into an English setting. So I... I am a huge fan of Alice in Wonderland. I, it's my favorite story. It was written by a mathematician. Uh, so all of the, the parables are all riddles. And yeah. I just enjoy it. It's a really difficult book to read, too. It's not straightforward like we've come to think about it. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's really great. Uh, so the flamingos are plastic flamingos that are in my house. My mom has... <laughs> Plastic flamingos all over the house. Wow. And I think our house is so whimsical without it even trying. And then I wanted to do the uh, iconic white rabbit. And I didn't want to do it in a character. So I did research into white rabbits and I wanted to do albino white rabbit with the red eyes. Yep. So it's unsettling to see a rabbit with red eyes but I wanted to bring in that little bit of danger, which is what McQueen, Alexander McQueen, used to do in his works. He used to right. always bring in unsettling. <laughs> and uh, so I uh, utilized the frock from Patu, and then I added a, a rose, and that's symbolic of the head, whether or not it actually is, it's, it's a frock. And then the mushrooms to add a little bit of whimsical, and then again, this string and i and it's weird to think that the string if you see it through all of my work somehow takes form and takes life mm -hmm. it has a mind of its own uh string in different cultures mean different things different colors it could be a helpful thing it could also be menacing you yeah. know time up uh bringing people together uh fate so it could all mean that very, very cool. I didn't know that those are plastic flamingos. I thought they were yeah. flamingos. Flamingos. They're plastic flamingos. Uh, they, you know, there's nothing. They're the only plastic in the actual piece. Everything yeah. else is on reality. Well, except for Alice, obviously. Yes. Wow. This is the power of surreal art and your imagination. <laughs> yeah. Of course, there's only a pair of legs. It's implied that this figure has arms. There's yeah. no arm. Yeah. And then it's implied that they have a head. There is no head. It's just a rose. Super, super and, cool. Yeah. The very English, contemporary English way with the Dali, with an Alice in Wonderland twist. I, I think everybody has some form of good memory about Alice. Yes. And way into this. Yeah, this will be the perfect print for your study room, I'm telling you. <laughs> I think it will be. It is. I, I think a lot of um, a lot of people that are fans of the classic book yeah. or even the Disney story will enjoy it. Very, I, I, very amazing. Okay, now I love this. I love the story. Okay, but <laughs> now we have to keep going to another okay. piece. Yep. So this one. Um, um, yeah. Tell me about it because I am confused when I look at this. <laughs> oh my gosh. So I, I was, where was I? I was reading Macbeth and I wow. was reading. Yeah. I love Shakespeare. I huge fan. Macbeth is one of my favorite stories <laughs> or of his. And I was inspired by the witches, Hecate, yep. God, Hecate, the only one that I remember, Hecate, and then there's two others, but um, there, uh, I was inspired by the, the witches, mm -hmm. beginnings of the scene, 
and I wanted to give them uh, something that is synonymous with warding off evil, evil thoughts, negativity, which is the evil eye, the yeah. circular. This is very prevalent in many cultures, yeah. uh, especially Middle East. And I, it, we also have a lot of it in Mexico. They always have it in bracelets and red string bracelets and it has the evil eye to ward off negative yeah, yeah. so and it's ironic that these witches have these evil eyes uh to ward off what they are they are uh, apparently evil and so i wanted to use the keyhole the keyhole is in the dress which you often see in dali salvador dali's mm -hmm. piece Mm -hmm. You often see keyholes where there shouldn't be. It's like a lock. Try yep. to. And then there's a balcony, a small little balcony. So then it becomes a window. And then there is a string again that interweaves in all of them. It goes in and out on each of these figures. Now they are wearing couture. But I wanted to reshape couture and change it into a different uh, form, you know, mm -hmm. where they become like these things. And they are kind of offsetting, too, because when you look at it, you kind of don't really want to look at it because yeah. of the eyes. They're staring at you. Yes. And the setting itself is inspired by uh, I'm a huge fan of nature mm -hmm. and uh, I wanted to straight away from the usual blank slate and I incorporated a dark ominous sky which is also present in Macbeth mm -hmm. so the type of setting that they would be in so I I was inspired by again old English folklore and witches and they all have a little bit of personality all different shapes and sizes I think we've seen witches be different in uh, like hocus pocus when one is big, slim, pretty. Also in um, the the fairies and Sleeping Beauty when one is a different size height. Uh, so that is a reason why some of, they're all different. One is a little bit fuller. One is shorter. One is fine. One is bent over. You know. So they all have through body language or body language, they give personality. Diversity, so, but at the same time, they still have that hourglass body. <laughs> yeah, they all have their hourglass. You got to look good if you're going to do bad, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I start to wonder, like, what, what are you thinking inside your brain all the time? Because it's just like yeah. completely surreal, yeah. completely crazy, but then it turns out to be really fun. I mean, uh -huh. sure, you might at first glance, you might think this is this looks super evil. But then when you when you look at it more, you kind of like mm, it's actually not that bad. Like for some reasons, like I guess because of the red. So my eyes will constantly look at the keyholes. Yes, exactly. Because you want to know. And that is a keyhole. That's why people look into keyholes, because you want to see what's on the other side. That's true. And that's why it's a balcony because you want to step in, it's welcoming. It wants you to look inside of this, yes. but throwing you off is the evil eye. It's like, you can look, but you can't touch kind of thing. So it's, <laughs> it's drawing you in, but it's also, also telling you to stay away. Yes. Because of this. so it has like a weird friction between the, the viewer and the piece. That's uh, Ali did that. It's very prevalent in surrealism very prevalent in uh, a lot of works of art not just uh, surrealism but any any form i think portraiture mm -hmm. as well. well i i think this is gonna be a good uh, bathroom piece basically just like uh, hurry up uh, and finish and go home <laughs> oh you're if you're having trouble and you need to think just look at them they're gonna tell you <laughs> i know yeah, that's right well okay <laughs> I am just going to keep going because I want people to think about what, where they should put this piece. Um, okay, so okay, so this is basically the Zodiac series you are working on for the online store. So you're going to have 12 pieces. So basically, there'll be one each month. And this one is, what is this? Taurus. Taurus. And what are you... Like, what's the story behind this Taurus? Why, why are they golden eggs? 
<laughs> so this is inspired by, I believe, vintage McQueen, or maybe no, I, 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 I take that back. It may have been the earlier stages of Sarah Burton at Alexander McQueen, mm -hmm. uh, a frock, and and they had all of these different uh, what is it ruffles, ruffles? Yep. black and white, mm -hmm. and I wanted to challenge myself and turn it into something different while still keeping the elements. Mm -hmm. And the elements that are synonymous with Alexander McQueen are leather, leather and armor. And that is what the, the skull is. It's a, it's a armor mm -hmm. and the leather and the red. So these are classic elements that Lee McQueen introduced into his earlier collections, which were always synonymous with being savage and, and very, you know, uh, off-putting yep. and Dean, you know? Yep. And so uh, there is a, a timeline with, which is life, the egg and death, the skeleton. So there are three different timelines present. The pre well, as I said, the present, which is the, this bull or the sim symbolism for a bull, mm -hmm. the egg, which is at the beginning, and the the skeleton, which is the the end. Uh, there's beauty in all three of them, as you can tell, because there's they're made out of gold. So it's it's uh, introducing this idea that it is it's a circular thing and there's beauty in the birth and the present and in death mm -hmm. uh, death very prevalent in uh, mexican culture with dia de los muertos we don't consider it the end we consider it a, another step mm -hmm. you know and movies like coco uh, disney's coco also yep. talk about it um and so it, it's like this new era and uh i wanted to now put it into a dream because oftentimes life is a dream and it, it just seems like we're alone in this. Yep. Uh, we're not alone, but sometimes we feel as if it. So there may be some points of somber or feelings of somberness or not. Now the, the ribbon, is, it, it serves to purpose. It is uh, the tail of the bull, but also hope. And hope is coming out of the shadow which is shadows are usually negative because it's, yeah. you know, it's blocking the sun, yeah. but the, that is blocking it is birth. So it's just, no matter what, it's going to turn out well. So there is hope, there is death, there's, there's a lot of conflict, but I wanted to give a different take on Taurus and the resilience because Taurus tends to be about groundedness, about pushing forward. Yeah. And that is what I believe encompasses the zodiac sign and what great um then what great designer than to put uh, one of my favorites as alexander mcqueen that's, to represent that's really cool because there is actually philosophy inside the surreal yeah. art uh, <laughs> More uh, than, i thought it was just like okay there is this taurus and then there's some there's one egg and there's some <laughs> skeletons and let's call it a day but then when you look no. at it, you're oh. like okay there are more meanings to this piece yeah, that's the beauty of surrealism. You can go on and on and on and on. And in art in general, and I think a lot of people, when they see fashion illustration, they just say, okay, it's just this mannequin wearing this dress or this outfit, and that's it. But I think as artists, we put meaning into it. We put a little bit of ourselves into yeah. it. And uh, yeah, this is uh, also a time when I was, you know, looking into becoming a fashion illustrator. So I thought about my career as general. So there's so much meaning and so much connection. And I, there's a lot of this in, of me in yeah. this piece. So whoever ends up buying it, sorry, you're buying a little bit of my life and uh, you're stuck with it. <laughs> no return, no return. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, yeah. But now we can move on to the next horoscope, um, mm -hmm. which is, Gemini. Gemini. So Gemini, this is an uh, older piece. It's based off of Prabhu Garang. And he uh, is a wonderful designer. I enjoy Prabhu. I, I enjoy his work. I And recently he's become very vocal in social issues like, uh, you know, Asian violence, stopping Asian violence, stopping, uh, being very political, uh, 
Kamala Harris always wears Prabo now. Yeah. And uh, he's become very, very influential in fashion and hopefully uh, bridging uh, politics and fashion yeah. because they are one side. But back to this piece. So I wanted to do a twins. So this is the twins, but they're different. They may have the same body language, but they're different. One is the moon and one is the sun. Uh, this could play into part fraternal twins when one is older than another. Mm -hmm. You know, one is born a few minutes older than the other. Yeah. This would be uh, that one is completely different, like Mary Kate and Ashley, where they look similar, but they're only fraternal twins or even identical twins where they share the same mm -hmm. uh, amniotic sac, but they, they're born at different times. So twins are the same, but they're different different personalities and it also pays homage to uh the, the shining the 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 twins where you look at them and like please play with us <laughs> come play with us so i i there is some darkness in it but there's also light there is that string of fate and i will confidently yeah. say that this is a, the red string of fate which i believe in chinese culture is very influential i missed yes. I'm, i don't know if it's about uh putting people together um it, it usually means that it's putting like couples together but then i think in this sense it's like you are born together by fate so mm. stick with each other that's how i see when i look at this piece yeah and it, it's 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 very true it is very true. And then also, I think when you get into uh, astrology, there's also the thing of feminine energy and masculine energy, which mm -hmm. some people disagree with, agree with. But in this case, you could also read that the moon, I believe, has feminine energy and the yeah. other has masculine. That doesn't mean that it determines our gender. It yeah. just means it may be like more comforting. Others may be more logical, which are attributed to certain genders, which, you know, we're entering a new era where everybody has everything we all have it inside of us yes that's um it doesn't matter but i wanted to put it in a in a dream-like setting again yep. and i i may continue that with my uh zodiac which they're all in dreams like we all dream and this one has space and so there's stars and planets and everything so they're just two twins uh it is inspired by Prabhu Garan. it is inspired by uh nice. the <laughs> The Shining Twins, I don't remember their names, but it is good. Okay. And there, there is, I mean, there is a little bit of a, it's a little scary because of the, you know, cultural references, pop culture references that yes. we have. But also there's a lot of peace because it's, when you're in space, it's, it's silent. It's, it's yeah. just peace. And the colors are very inviting. They may be a little bit cool in tone, but they're still a little bit inviting really really cool like i love the story behind this the sun and the moon and um yeah if you want to ex explain about the feminine and masculine energy like i would just tell people to play with tarot cards they will learn about play with, yeah play with tarot cards i mean there's different schools of thought and as yeah. you can see the details of this piece they're holding hands so yeah. they're holding hands and they're also having letting the stream go through them yeah and so and the string is also uh, wrapping around their hands. So like you said, it is bringing them together. So there's a lot of different interpretations. I believe that Gemini has like different uh, energies. And so yeah. I wanted to bring that into this piece. Um, so this is my on Gemini. This is my gift for okay. Gemini. So I can wait for you to do cancer. What's next? Oh, that cancer one's good. Is next. Like crap. <laughs> yeah oh my God. Crab, the crab and the lion yes so okay so basically we just finished looking at all your seven illustrations and they are now available online to for you to purchase again each print is 16 by 20 inch and then they only have 25 prints for each design yeah. for each illustration They're only going to be 25 pieces yep. don't believe that they're going to be printed ever again um you know 
you have I to don't... change them. If you need to burn them again, you have to change it. You have to change the design. <laughs> yeah, I would have to change, but I don't think this exact design will ever be printed anywhere. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm confident about that. Uh, so buy them. They're only 25 pieces, you know, and this is your chance because I have been asked many times, oh, where can I buy your prints? Where can I buy your prints? Yeah. This is the time that you can buy my prints. Yes. I, this is store that I've collaborated with that has my prints available. Yes. And then um, like aside from the Zodiac, the other five prints is only available for a month. So you will have Thank to God. get them before we take them down. Yeah. Have to buy them. Buy, buy, buy them. them. <laughs> buy, take a piece of me with you. They <laughs> all have deep meaning to me, and I think you would enjoy them. Uh, and if I, I know that surrealism is very difficult to understand, mm -hmm. but I, think you, if you just break it down to elements, it's easy. It's yeah. really easy to to feel because you have to think or uh, feel it what is it what motions brew into you yes. you know some surreal artists go for shock others go for whatever is going in the politics other times it's influenced by alice in wonderland or Mike Beth or the oscars or the shine or american horror story so you gotta you gotta yes. take whatever relationship and connection you have to it is very special. Very, very cool. And thanks Glenn for talking to us and then show, show basically the viewers like the behind the scenes story of all your pieces. Yeah, you get to see a little bit of what goes on in my brain and the process that goes behind creating these pieces. Yeah. And then with that being said, we, uh, we are signing off and then Hopefully you buy the prints. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> buy the prints. Buy the prints. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We will see you at the online store. Yeah. I know. We will do that. <laughs>